up Dooters and Scooters? You have made it to the January reading vlog. This is my second attempt at a reading vlog, the first being the Wives Under the Sea video. I still very much do not know what I am doing or how to edit, but we are here. We are continuing, we are persevering, and I'm back on Instagram because I don't... <laughs> instinctually uh the other day i deleted all all the videos on this youtube channel and then i was like why why did i do that i just like in a panic erased everything and i was like no i'm gonna re-upload them and then in a panic uh yesterday i made instagram so if you are into bookish instagram pages link in the doobly do all right please enjoy the following clips and i will meet you back here for the full wrap up hi welcome to the ASMR section of this video as I read these love poems and I read letters of Peter and Virginia. It's allowing me to realize that the most like primal feeling we all have is love. I think we're all just experiencing uh, gave, gave human emotions when we love people and I think that's really fun. Okay, bye bye. I am sat here with Maggie Nelson's Jane. My friction stamps marking my favorite parts and writing down those quotes. And I am transcribing this one. It reads, Dear, I understand many people write for therapy, one's own. So this epistle, addressed to no one, is therapy for me. What have I got to say? Ugh, a lot of crazy impressions about nothing, I imagine. Melissa Broder has a brand new book coming out in the fall, and I am freaking out. I think she mentioned writing this book in her podcast. She says she like writes her books audibly, like while she's driving. And I'll think this is it. This is editing Vic. There are sounds in the background. I'm here to tell you that we have a cover. We have a cover for Death Valley. It's this one. Ah! We have a release date, October. You can pre-order it now. <sighs> Do you ever just get so excited you get angry? Yes. Okay, continue. I'm currently reading Whip Smart, and something that I do is print things out onto post-it notes and paste them in my book. So in this case, this line reminded me of Rocky Horror Picture Show, and this one reminded me of Shakespeare. And ta-da! Bum bum bum! I just finished reading Jane and Five Stars. Uh, my other Maggie Nelson that I've read was Bluettes a couple years ago, and that also got five stars. And now I just want to read every Maggie Nelson ever. So I'm going to print out the cover. I always use sticker paper. These are from online labels. There are 100 matte sticker sheets. And in order to not be wasteful, I'm just putting in a bunch of books to fill up the page. Books that I plan to read this year or that are currently on my TBR or that I've ordered. Things like that. And I always make it an inch. And we always print out two copies. Because one goes, let's do control C, control V. One goes in the monthly section and then one goes in the review section. Hello, it's January 7th. Congratulations to making it this far into the video. Thank you. We're two books in already. Sappho, done. Three stars. Jane, done. Five stars. And we're halfway through Whip Smart, Melissa Fable's first book on being a dominatrix and overcoming her heroin addiction. It's amazing. We have interrupted irregularly scheduled book programming to show you my very poor skills on bass. It's January 16th and I have completed five books. I need to read eight to nine books a month to get that 100 goal. Um, right now I'm reading The Wall and I'm very horrified yet calm at the same time. I'm like, yes, solitude is calm, but also being stuck inside a glass dome and everyone outside being frozen and not being able to escape said dome. And like, what if you escape the dome and like the air is poison and aliens maybe question mark? I don't know. Horrifying. So there I was in a wild and strange meadow in the middle of the forest. And suddenly I was the owner of a cow. <laughs> Hello humans, it is January 22nd. 
I was getting worried because I only finished five books and I was like, I'm not, I'm never going to finish these in time. So I just got my skinny books. This is a children's book. This is mostly pictures. And we read it and we went through it. I finished uh, The Woman Who Killed the Fish by Clarice Slice Spector. I got Roosters and Dogs and Rabbits. And Clarice speaking directly to your soul. And Sylvia Plath, who drew things. I just, her original ink on paper drawings. We need at least one more book. At least one more book. Um, these are majestic and beautiful and has actually been a catalyst for my commonplacing. The index cards are finally here. These are from Foglietto. I got the little cardboard box. It did come a teensy bit warped, but also it came all the way from France. So it was a, it was a long way to the armpit of America here. Um, and I'm using my index cards. They're all blank. Right now I'm writing down quotes about hell. I started watching a show called Severance yesterday on Apple TV. I don't know his name. I call him Ben Wyatt because he was Ben Wyatt on Parks and Rec. And they said a quote about hell, which then reminded me of a quote about hell in No Exit by Jean-Paul Sartre. And I'm going to put it in a little index that says hell on it. So I will keep all my quotes about hell in the same place. And I'm finally using my tiny Hobonichi again. This is what I was using to commonplace. Uh, and I went ahead and wrote it down. I love commonplacing for TV shows. It's something that I never did. And it's really easy to do for books because you just sit with your book and you highlight it. But you can't sit with a show and highlight it. It's it's more like intangible because it's like a digital thing. Um, so keep me my little book with my TV shows. I wish shows let us screenshot things. That would be so much easier. I can just screenshot it and like revisit it later, but salavi, that's what we're doing. I'm also gonna do one now about the good place. So I'm gonna make this index be sad and then one of them is gonna be Clarice. And Clarice says, every time I say Clarice, I think of Clarice. I've never even seen The Silence of the Lambs, but like Clarice. Um, what can you do with the truth that everyone's a little sad and a little alone? So that's what Clarice wrote. And then it reminds me of the good place when Eleanor t tells Michael, all humans are aware of death. So we're all a little bit sad all the time. I'm excited. I don't know. Does anyone else get excited about index cards? <laughs> I'm also excited to reach my eighth book. Yes, I can do this. We can do this. It is January 23rd and I went to the bookstore. I picked the A Horse at Night on Writing by Amina Kane, Mary Oliver's A Thousand Mornings, Check Out 19 by Claire Louise Bennett, and Ducks by Kate Beaton. Yay! A book haul with breakfast. We have Red Parts by Maggie Nelson, The Argonauts by Maggie Nelson, Housekeeping by Marilyn Robinson, Ponds by Claire Louise Bennett, Modern Nature by Eric Derek Jarman, and Disease by Samantha Hunt. Well, okay, and there was like 5 a.m. on a Saturday, and I did try to go back to sleep a couple of times, but I figured we'd have a good job. Here's good. Um, I can get a little bit of journaling in. I haven't journaled in quite some time and I'm sure there's feelings and emotions and experiences that I have to work through. So I'm going to journal for a little bit and maybe get some reading in. I still haven't finished any book, but I did get pretty far into House of Light by Mary Oliver. It's in my, my work bag. Um, but let's take it out so I can show you. Well, it's not House of Light. It's A Thousand Mornings. <laughs> a Thousand Mornings by Mary Oliver, which are so gorgeous and glorious. I've gotten 42 pages in. They are emotional and poignant, and they just make me feel them. You know what I mean? Should I read you one? Yeah. This one is called Three Things to Remember. As long as you're dancing, you can break the rules. Sometimes, breaking the rules is just extending the rules. 
sometimes there are no rules. I love the color. So if I finish this today, that will be, I think, my eighth book. And then I can calmly um, continue my other books. <laughs> All right, I need my journal. I think I'll take out my journal. Okay, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, last time I journaled in here was the 14th. Today is the 28th. Um, so I'm going to rip out the 28th sticker from the Himikuri uh, calendar. I think those are tumbles under there. That's exciting. Alright. And I do have my mommy here, but I recently got the Zebra Sanofa in the vintage. So I actually want to try those out and see what they look like. Let's see. It's still brand new. I haven't opened it yet. Okay, there are our colors. I'm definitely vibing with these ones. So I think I'm going to go with the, the mustard. Let's do a little bit of germ. All right, love. So the pen was actually really lovely to write with. It's interesting how the same things come up like time and again, and it just makes me understand that some things are a little bit harder to work through and will take time. And I think that's okay. I was feeling the same way 10 years ago, but when I look at my life now, it's very different than it was 10 years ago. I was a 17 year old kid in high school 10 years ago, you know? But I wrote about um, how I am one of those people who are like, I can do everything by myself. But I wonder if that's a, like, I'm afraid of people disappointing me or not getting the help that I need or um, just out of fear, more so than actual independence. Like all of these fears were cropping up, all of these old stories were cropping up, which is great. You want it all to come out from your head to the paper. So it won't end up being there. What else did I talk about? Um, I graded my life a B minus. <laughs> so that's fun. I mean, that's a pretty good grade. We're passing. And then I wrote, um, have faith that even though in the present it may all look the same, it never is the same. Which is true. Every day really does feel the same, but you look back at your life and you think how different it was. Even if not externally, internally. Like, I feel like I'm the most creative I've ever been. I feel like I'm the most mentally stable I've ever been. The most financially stable I've ever been. So, some things have changed. Um, some things have stayed exactly the same. Uh, but just, you know, what, I, wonder, I wonder what my life will look like in 10 years. I do feel a little bit stuck, a little bit stagnant, um, but also unsure. Unsure of what steps to take to for it to not feel like that, um, but also not wanting to get in the way. Because I mean, like a small part of me does believe in destiny, and like, do I want to get in the way of that, right? Or should I just surrender and let it happen? What will whatever will be will be, and whatever won't won't. Um, so that's what I talked about. In my journal this morning at 5 a.m. Big <laughs> feelings for a Saturday morning. Ordered in breakfast today because yes. I finished 2000 mornings. I also finished Severance last week. I haven't been obsessed with the show this like in years. It is so good. I think last show I was obsessed with was like Killing Eve, but that's gone. Severance is impeccable. I've started re-watching it. I can't stop watching like video essays about it. Blew my mind. You made it! How was that? It was great, right? I am so talented, absolutely hilarious, just like a force to be reckoned with. I know you had a blast. So the first book I finished in January was Sappho. I've never read any Sappho before. I don't know much of anything about Greek myth. So I do think a little bit of this might have flown right over my head, but it was also so lyrical and beautiful and sing-songy. I think these would have been beautiful as songs or like hymns or prayers. Um, what did I say? Oh, here, I have some quotes that I wrote down in my reading journal. 
This is from excerpt 58. Tell me out of all mankind, whom do you love better than you love me? Who do you love more, right? Who is better than me to be loved? We love Sappho. I gave this three stars. The next book was Jane, a murderer. Five stars. My second Maggie Nelson, my first Maggie Nelson was Bluettes. It blew my mind. But um, I only read Bluettes uh, on audio. I just kept listening to it until my loan expired. So I do have a goal of actually reading that like physically. I think I need that in my life. But Maggie Nelson was like a bit of a terrifying author like Anne Carson is for me. But I'm glad that I read it. It's not that bad. It's not that scary. Well, it's terrifying because it's about a murder. But like writing, intelligence, understanding it wise. Are you, do you get me? Are you afraid of authors? Like for example, I'm horrified of like high fantasy or really chunky books. I have this preconceived notion that I can't read such books. But you can read anything you want. Jane, a murderer. It's about Maggie Nelson's aunt who was murdered as a college student. She took a ride one day. She wanted to go home. She put a little post-it note like in her college, hey like if you're going to this place can I tag along? Can I carpool so I can go home? The person who responded was not a student, was a murderer. Murdered her aunt. So the entire thing is about this murder, um, which the case was opened later and that's what Red Parts is about. I have not read this one yet. But as of this book, they had not found out who did it. And it's told in poetry. It's told in poetry and it's beautiful. All right, here are some quotes. This is from page 89. There is so much now that yesterday doesn't matter. I have so much and I'm so lucky. Who could ask for more? There were excerpts from Jane's diary in this, though it started off a little bit like dreamlike, like a dream sequence. It blew my mind. I read it in maybe two or three days. Page 158. When I can accept time, life, and death, I will be ready for the responsibilities of adulthood and will step into them easily and with confidence. Jane was so relatable. You could see yourself in Jane, what she thought what struggles she went through, what hopes and dreams she had, and it was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. A masterpiece. Five stars. Okay, then I read Whip Smart, my last Melissa Fables. It's my last one. I read them all. I was gonna say from back to front, but like that sounds gross. From most recent to least recent. Publication order backwards. Whip Smart is about her time as a dominatrix and still addicted to drugs. So she does talk about addiction in almost all of her books. And it's quite harrowing always to read about addiction because she consciously knows that what she is doing to her body is terrible. And it, she, she admits to getting high and literally not being able to move off of the floor for, because she's like throwing up and can't move her limbs. And then when she is able to just like crawl back like to bed, it's all to just get high all over again. Like it's this horrible cycle. So the parts about her getting high were really, really troubling to read. The dominatrix seems not as troubling. <laughs> I mean, people were paying for that. I was a little surprised. I'm like, mm, they're like religious leaders and figures, like like high class businessmen. Like who else would go to these places, right? Like good on you. I could never. Like I don't think I have the confidence in me to like command a room like that and be like, sit down, like do what I say. I don't know. I think you have to have a certain kind of chutzpah to do that. Um, the one thing I didn't enjoy was like the brown showers, like learning about that. Oof. <coughs> no, thank you. Five stars. Amazing. <laughs> I love Melissa Fabos. Okay, here is a quote. This is from page 274. At a certain level, I have, sorry, my bangs are in my eyeballs. Let's try one more time. At a certain level of noise and crowd, New York's mania can seem a comfort, like bobbing on top of a salty wave, everyone shifting in tandem, tightly bound molecules pulled by some greater force, the jumbled twine of our wills, somehow unifying into a single tide. Next book. All right, next was a comic book. This one, best comic book of the year, 
it was in everyone's like top 10 comic books of the year like it was in every video that I saw and not only did it get five stars I tabbed it I have never in my life tabbed a comic book this blew my mind some of the negative comments on Goodreads was like this is just meta navel gazing like why me that's what I live for give me all of your personal bullshit like that's what I want I don't care about you plot we don't need plot just tell me your thoughts what's going on what is that like sound I wonder what's going on inside his mind um it's lonely at the center of the earth she's going through sorry my beauty's falling off my hair is very dirty we're not I don't need to look at that she is going through a serious depression in this case her depression is pictured by this kind of uh, not Murazaki? Murakami? No. Miyazaki. Yes. So here's her depression and how she draws it. This like suicidal ideation, this big monster that follows her everywhere. She goes and just turns all the good things into bad things and makes her um, second guess herself. When she's alone, we can see her normal face. When she's out in public, hanging out with other people, it's like this circle, the circle face, because we all wear a mask, right? We're not our authentic selves. Maybe I don't think we are at any point. It's hard. Like when are we our most authentic selves? But any, you know, every occasion warrants, I don't know, clothing and a way of speak. I don't know. I feel like all of us wear some kind of mask, boot and a boot. Uh, and I like the depiction of that. There's different art styles in here. Some like oil paintings, some collage. There's just a page where it's just text messages. This blew my mind. Like even if you don't vibe with the story, the art blew my mind. If you like Fleabag or if you've ever been a depressed person, you gotta read this. I have never liked a comic book so much in my life. Five stars. Uh, here is a quote. She had a little list about what she wanted her future self to be like. And then she said, cool, character developed. <laughs> Everyone wants to. And then there was like a little scratch and she wrote, marry me, but we can guess what she meant. Uh, and here is another quote. This was at the end of the comic. Sorry, I just want to make sure I don't have lipstick on my teeth. This is just a story. I don't know how much of me exists in these pages, but it's always been my belief that stories make us human. Absolutely. I followed that one up with a graphic novel called Thieves. I got this recommendation from Nerd Burger. I always watch their end of the year comic book wrap ups. They're one of my favorites. And they mentioned this. The art style is so sweet and so wholesome. I read it in one sitting. All these gorgeous pastel colors. I've never read Heartstopper, but I've watched Heartstopper. And my guess is like that the color vibe is the same. So this girl is in love with this other girl in her class, but is too scared to say anything. So she just goes to parties and like makes googly eyes. And then they, so they meet at a party and they both end up stealing things, but they don't know that each other is stealing stuff. And then, yeah, so they, they go to parties, become kleptomaniacs, and in the adventure of returning their stolen goods, they fall in love. They start, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Here's my little um, journal entry. I said, so cute. Okay, let's continue. We have three more. At this point, I kind of started freaking out. So I went with a lot shorter books. This one was mostly pictures. The drawings of Sylvia Plath. I have a Sylvia Plath collection back here. The only things I haven't read are The Letters of Sylvia Plath and Red Comet. I've also never finished The Journals of Sylvia Plath. I have been reading that book for, well, it's almost like 20, I'm 27 now. So for seven years, I haven't finished that book. But all the other ones I have read. I have read a lot of Sylvia Plath, um, so it was interesting to see her artwork. I wish that there was more. There wasn't a lot of artwork in here. And I feel like more has to exist. Can you imagine just like a whole Sylvia Plath sketchbook? Hell yeah. Look how talented she was. These like ink drawings. It was very, very simple to get through. There were like drawings of her in Spain and France. There were mostly still lives. Um, 
Realis realism? There's a cow. I think it's a cow. I don't know. A ramble bull. Please don't quote me on this. So most of it was just some of her drawings. Some of it were letters. I did tab a couple quotes from the letters. See, they were like letter excerpts. Let's have a look. Uh, talking about catching the service as it were a bus. I beamed benevolently at them over my third atheistic cup of coffee and ate my existential egg. <laughs> ah, that's, that's her being sassy and like petty <laughs> towards people at church. Be nice to people because that would be very funny. I would love an existential egg, please. Then I read The Woman Who Killed the Fish, the first Life Spectre I've ever finished. Holy smokes. I am planning to read all the Life Spectres. I own quite a few. Um, I'm just trying to convince myself that I'm smart enough to understand them. It's hard. Life Spectre is a little bit hard. Okay, I'm sorry. But this is for children. Okay, for young humans. So I was able to kind of understand it. Uh, three stars for this one. I gave two stars for the plath because I wish that there was more. There should have been more. This was sweet. In the first one, she forgot to feed a fish that did not belong to her. It belonged to her son and her son went on vacation and she didn't feed the fish. But I highlighted, if you like to write or draw or dance or sing, do it because it's great. As long as we're playing around like that, we don't feel lonely and our hearts warm up. I liked it. I think if I had a child to read it to, I would. She spoke directly like to the children and that broke that fourth wall and I really liked that as well. It was kind of like she was storytelling, which she was. And the last I read, of course, is Mary Oliver. I read my first and many Mary Olivers last year, like seven Mary Olivers, I think. Um, I read this one in a couple of days, A Thousand Mornings, five stars. I mean, come on. I adore Mary Oliver with my entire human soul. And beyond that, let's have a little look here at a quote. There are lots of tabs. There are quite a many tabs. There are quite a few post-it notes. I wrote all over this book. She just makes me feel things and I don't know. I feel like Mary Oliver cannot be described. She can only be felt. I mean, if you've ever felt it, you know what I mean. Okay, let me, let me read you a short one. This is called Three Things to Remember. I might have already read you this in this vlog. Okay, it doesn't matter. I'll read it to you again. As long as you're dancing, you can break the rules. Sometimes breaking the rules is just extending the rules. Sometimes there are no rules. Let me read you another one, just in case I have already read you that one. Not enough is a poor life, but too much is, well, too much. And that was the eight books. Those were the eight books that I read in January. Let me grab them. And that's a wrap. Subscribe, ring the bell, follow me on Insta. Lots of love. Peace.